Welcome back, Bahaitu. You're still watching Zanzi Fundis. Yes, I did indicate earlier on that we're going to be joined by a sportscaster, a business lady, a pioneer in her own right, a person that's usually on this side of the seat, but I had to put on the other side of the seat because we have to speak about something that's very important. That's none other than Koli Zondo. How are you, Miss Koli? I, I am nervous and I'll tell you why. Yeah. This is unfamiliar territory, yeah. as you rightfully put it. I should be on the other side. So I'm just sitting here thinking, I wonder what Susan Buza, you know. You know, let's see how you handle this one. Let's see, let's see. <laughs> yeah, but you know, there's a reason why you're here. Uh, that you are training for life, Kiveli training for life. Yeah. What is that? What is this whole training? about oh no thank you for the invite so i am an ambassador for vw train for life mm. and the initiative is absolutely incredible it's again in case in this uh, program started three years ago mm -hmm. and i've always known it from afar because i've seen the likes of abu uh, dr desri ellis the banyana coach mm. abu simpiwe lulu the former bandwana head coach and uh, Zanel Ntlapo, the Sundowns ladies uh, captain, they were part of this program and they were targeting areas such as Etembisa, Nase mm, Alex. Mm, mm. And so when VW called me up, Uwuti, we want you to be a part of this initiative for this third year. I thought, my goodness, it's fantastic. But the cherry on top was that Manji, they're going to the southwestern townships. Oh, okay, SOA okay, to, okay. We'll know? get that because I can see the excitement that that's coming up more now because <laughs> and all that, you know, <laughs> yes. but, but you mentioned this program and you're saying it's been running for three years. Yeah. Right? In these three years, who's, who, who is, it, is it exactly aimed at? Like, when's Agalana? Well, um, you know, it is young girls mm. um, and a lot of people have been asking questions about why only girls? You know, we should be also looking at the mm. boy child. But for now, it is about young girls and especially those who are around the age of 12 to 18. So uh. it's high schools predominantly. We want to get uh, young people where they are right now. They've got a lot of enthusiasm. They've got a lot of excitement. Mm. There is this fire inside them, you know, and what a better way to target those young people and give them these soft focus programs you know uh, provide them with mentorship you know some of them will get bursaries from VW mm -hmm. so what 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 this does is really a holistic program and so we just come in to kind of give them insight into what happens on the other side you know of, of media and broadcasting so you're saying it's soccer focused program yes. and like, yeah, are there matches? Is there like an age group, you know, divisions yeah. where you have to, because now you're mentioning ladies and, I, and I'm really interested when it comes to development. Absolutely, because uh, we know Uguti right now in terms of women's football, it's not at the level that it should be. Mm. You know, we're still fighting mm. the huge fight mm. of professionalizing women's football. So what we essentially do is not only do we go there and motivate the kids, you know, uh, give them insight into what we do, but they is also soccer training mm. and then they do get involved in matches and mm. this whole thing then culminates into a soccer tournament mm. uh, which will be uh, taking place in September so and my Lalapo in September we have the likes of Abu Dez, Abu Simpiwi, mm. who are there, other scouts, you know, that, that can really kind of unearth these diamonds mm. and make sure which they're now on that path and that trajectory to actually playing football and finding themselves maybe one day in the Hollywood Bed Super League. You have my attention because Ukulma, with a sport that I really love, Ukulma Abu Dez, Ukulma Abu Simpiwi, you're speaking, you're mentioning powerhouses. Yeah. Now you're there. Are you going to be playing as well? Uh, what's what's Koli's <laughs> role in, 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 in all of this? But I want to say to these young girls, not all of us can play football, you know, mm. not all of us can be the stars. We'd love to, you know, mm. we'd love to don uh, a number 10, mm. but not all of us will do that. So how else can you then contribute to the sport? Sometimes it is 
through broadcasting. You know, it mm -hmm. is making sure that you're giving those accurate reports day in and day out. So how do you find yourself on radio, on television? So that is now the angle that I bring through to say, well, to even if you are not playing, you're not on the field, you're not part of the starting 11, you can be on the technical team. Mm -hmm. There's so many ways in which you can contribute to the sport without actually wearing the jersey and kicking the ball around, you know? So I love Nowutsi, this is what they've done because in the past, VW have just focused on brilliant women mm -hmm. that have kicked the ball, you know, mm -hmm. that have really done the national jersey and supported us at the highest of levels. And now they're saying, we understand what to these young girls, you know, whether it's through radio or TV. And you mentioned also what it started in July. Um, how's it been going so far? It's going so well. It really is going so well. Uh, so uh, we started around the area of Etipluf. Uh, that's the high schools that we've been going to. Uh, I'm hoping with this is a lady because me nang pumes that how you know yeah. that's 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 my hood. Yeah. Uh, but Owamanje, you know, since Etipluf visiting all of these schools, and I can tell you, just with the questions that come up, yazim um, na we didn't have these kinds of opportunities where abantu could actually come. Abantu like abo vita. Mm -hmm. This is what happens, you know, in the industry. This is how you get in, you know. Uh, these are the kind of challenges that you can expect. You know, some of the good things that also come from this industry. I wish I also had a front row seats. classroom, you know, and we actually give them all this info. And what makes me so happy, even though it is bittersweet because it's just a few girls, but at the end of this, I'm going to have a few young girls that I can mentor. If I have a fame, mm -hmm. this is what we do, Masagas. What do you have to do? You know, see a stadium, all of these things. And that is going to, it, it's just, it's going to spark something mm -hmm. just to be there, to be on the ground. It's very different than to read about it on the newspaper mm -hmm. or watch someone's social mm -hmm. media page mm -hmm. and get it on the feed, you know? So they are really, they have such a golden opportunity and it, it's going to be incredible. Incredible, it sounds. And, and I, I would also like to see what's happening. We'll see, keep us updated in terms of that. But yeah. let's take it a bit back because you are not only doing that. There's some businesses that you're involved with. Yeah. Gizwa, Oguti, Bati, <laughs> you know, there's something that you're planning on opening, you're branching in. Is it sport? Are you going to be boxing yourself with sport? That's it? No, 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 no. So um, just a little bit of Mina, how I got into the industry mm. because uh, my primary education was in the sciences. So I'm actually an environmental scientist, mm. but I always knew Oguti oh. sport is something that I really, really love. Yeah. Yeah, so when the opportunity came about in 2013, SABC had a national presenter search and I decided to go on audition, okay. you know, mm. and just lie how ding. There were over 10,000 people that came through to 10, audition. 000. It was insane. The cues, my I still get goosebumps. Man, abanguti abantu balala e Oakland Park. Ma wala laban taba ten thousand. Are you not being dejected? Ah man, you know sometimes you see the number and intimidate you. Gitu yanga lesoskat. I got there. Uh, that time, Pelam Nabing, I said, Benzing and Alutone, Ben Sanama dreadlocks, I remember. Not calling you Shonogu a porter, so Ben Faga Idugu. And uh, one of the judges, uh, o Thomas of Labo, uh, you know, even critiqued me. Ati, Oli, but have you ever watched anyone on screen, mm. especially uh, doing sport or football, Nani? Mm. <laughs> this is the best that I could do. So you are intimidated, you know, not only in terms of how you look, you know, but are you sounding like someone that they're looking for, you know? Uh, do you have that look? Is your knowledge enough? And that presenter search tested us to the core, you know? So at the end of it all, I then won the Gauteng leg, mm -hmm. and then I had to compete against the other provincial winners. And then I came out tops as the national presenter search winner, you know? So from there, my life has been 
just incredible. You know, uh, the kinds of things I've done with the SABC, uh, from going to Rio, covering the mm. Olympics. That was I mean, not even my first flight out of the country. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I went to Brazil, I was like, wow! You know, the, these kinds of things happen to, to see different parts of the country. Um, it's things that I don't think would have happened to me ordinarily, you know, mm. especially when mm. you think about my background, Las Puma Corner, and mm. that's why I love this initiative. Mm. It's to say to these young girls, if it can happen to me, mm. there's nothing different about you. You know, uh, the sun will shine where it's supposed to shine and it can shine on all of us, you know? And so uh, that was my introduction into the industry. But with this kind of industry, you really need to be resourceful. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you need to look at multiple streams of incomes, mm -hmm. you know, and you also just need to tap into different talents that you have. Uh. And so I've always wanted to get into business. So after uh, completing my MBA, I then decided, Guti, restaurants is uh, really what I wanted to get into. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, with a few of my previous classmates, mm -hmm. uh, two mm -hmm. of them, you know, we've managed to open up two restaurants, which is incredible. And yeah, and right now I'm branching into my own wine brand, which is fantastic. Oh, oh, hold up, hold up. Ask me about the restaurant thing. Yeah. Um, because a lot of people say it's a bit challenging and, and, and you, you, you have problems that you'd encounter. Mm -hmm. How has it been for you so far, especially considering the effect of what you volatile, you know? It is a volatile industry. We got into the industry peak COVID 2020, when a lot of people were shutting down. A lot of people weren't even considering business. They were just looking at survival. Um, but uh, my partners and I, and we all have different backgrounds, by the way. Mm. One is an engineer, the other is a medical doctor. Mm. I come in as a media practitioner, an environmental scientist, and we went into this industry that we knew nothing about. Just armed with what we've learned mm. from school, mm. you know? Mm. And you realize Uguti, it is such a challenging industry when you think about the turnover of staff, mm. you know, when you think about uh, the competition around you oh. and the market that you're also trying to service because we went into an elite area, if I can call it that, mm -hmm. but we wanted to bring that sort of like traditional aspect of things. And now you are also trying to get Abantu to go back to where they come from, got Abantu Nabo. They want to go in, in a different direction, you know, because now you are leveling up. But what we found, Ugutiazi, when you stay true to your business, when you stay true to your identity, you're able to bring Abantu. Yeah, Abantu yeah. don't mind, Ugutiazi. Even if I find myself in a suburban area, yeah. I can actually go to yeah. Indau. That reminds me of home. You know, it doesn't mean that I am regressing, you know, but I'm just being true to, to who I am. Mm. So it is very challenging. Uh, you know, the things like uh, protection fees, you know, and 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 mm. and Abandu, uh, those are the things that they're scared to speak mm. about, you know, mm. in terms of its survival of the fittest. And when you're even able to branch out, it's it's even it's it, it's even more challenging. You mentioning branching out and I the trajectory of your career seems to be centered around the branching out. Anything that we should expect, because now you've gone into these so many streams. Yeah. Anything that we should expect from Ukoli right now, like, you know, are, are you done? Have you found yeah. your lanes that you're in or? We can never be done. I mean, when you look at a, a billionaire like uh, Patrice Mutsepe, he's still working. He doesn't need to, you know, so mm. you can never, ever, ever say that you're done. There's always something else to, to explore. So with me, definitely not. Uh, I think at the end of the day, it's about owning the value chain. And until you have owned the value chain, you can never say you're done. So, Sisak Alanj. All right, <laughs> this is only the beginning, but unfortunately, this is the end <laughs> for our show. I do thank you for taking your time and watching this episode. Do catch us next week as we bring the fundis, and we might also have another special guest. So make sure we're